Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International. We meet behind the Trade Fair, behind Zenith College. We meet on Wednesdays and we meet on Sundays. And you can always, you're always invited to our midweek and our uh, Sunday services. Now, I'm bringing to you matters of faith with Graphic Online. And this, this, this morning, I want to caption what I, I'm going to talk about as look who's talking. I found something in in the book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, there is a very powerful scripture over there. You remember that earlier on, Jesus um, had done miracle, everybody had left, and blah, blah, blah. And then later on, Peter was the same person who endorsed Jesus and said to him that, look, you, you, you are the son of God. Who are we going to go to? Blah, blah. And then, you know, in the same way, you remember that Jesus asked the question and said, who do men say that I am? And then uh, they gave him an answer. Then, then they asked um, uh, Peter and the disciples, but who do you say that I am? And then Peter gave a very powerful, revelatory uh, definition of who Jesus is. And Jesus was quick to say that, hey, Peter, this thing you are saying, you've had an interaction with my father. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Peter gave a very classic definition of who Jesus is, and, and that definition be, uh, became a basis for many other things. You know, Then Jesus began to talk about his death, not too far away from that statement. Jesus began to talk about his death, how he was going to die, and all those other things. And, and, and Jesus was talking, I mean that, listen, the Son of Man is going to lay down his life, and blah, blah, blah. And then Peter, you know, out of love, out of care, out of, you know, said to Jesus, no. Not, I mean, someone said, Tafia kwa. <laughs> you get it? There's no way you're going to die. I'm not, I'm not going to allow you to die. You're not going to die. And even if you're going to die, I'm going to die with you. I mean, it's impossible. You, you won't die. And it was a very, very powerful statement of, of um, uh, acknowledgement and statement of, uh, what do we call it, uh, um, admiration and, uh, and all, the, all the nice things. But then to my bigger surprise, look at what Jesus then said. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> you mean, you mean... <laughs> You mean, I mean, when Peter was talking, it wasn't Peter talking. That's what Jesus was trying to infer. He says, listen, get thee behind me, Satan. And then he said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. And I was alarmed. Like, oh, I mean, uh, uh, Master, why? I mean, you, the man just said nice things about you. And the things he was saying, he was saying it in your defense. And he was saying it to encourage you and to comfort you that, look, you are not alone. But Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Hmm. So, so, so you, you know what? It means that at that material moment, it wasn't Peter talking. Somebody else was talking. So somebody else was prophesying. Somebody else was speaking. And guess what? That is Peter, a disciple. I mean, a man of God. Hey, Petru, Petru, you know, the, yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, and, and then Jesus tells him, get thee behind me, Satan. So at that material moment, you think it was the voice of, of, of Peter? No, it was the voice of Peter prompted by the voice of Satan. It, it, was, it, it, was, it, was the, it was the enemy using the larynx or the syphagos or whatever it is, the voice box, the larynx of, 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 of Peter. So even though Peter, I mean, uh, uh, Peter was, it wasn't Peter speaking. It was somebody else who was speaking. And then I, I, I then Jesus began to say, he, he, why that person, why he said, this is not Peter speaking. He said, because you favor the things of men more than favor the things of God. So the yardstick to measure or to discern who was talking 
was what was the person driving? That what Peter was saying was going to frustrate the purposes of God. If Peter had got his wish and if what Peter had said, Jesus said, yes, amen, I like it. You and I will not be here today. It will cut short the salvation message. It will cut short the salvation story. It will destroy God's purposes. It will frustrate the plans of God. The enemy was speaking. You know, sometimes there are situations you'll be very surprised. But if you can be discerning enough, you will know that this is not God speaking. I've seen people do things. I've seen them do things and they, and, they, and they do it with zeal and they do it with all the, with the passion and all this thing. But that's not God. That is not God. That's the enemy. I've seen people sometimes, I mean, uh, uh, they, they have a zeal and they'll speak with passion concerning an issue. You, you understand? But truthfully, that thing is it's, it's, it's not of God. It's of the devil. I have, seen, I have seen church elders or church leaders, and I've seen pastors, and I've seen well-meaning people, I mean, uh, uh, what do we call, misdirected. I've seen them, I've seen them walk in certain areas that you, you look at them and you say, what's, what's wrong with this person? Can't you see that the enemy is using him? Or can't she see that the enemy is using her? Wow. Get thee behind me, Satan. So who's talking? Sometimes when, when, when there are issues, sometimes you need to ask who is talking. That is, be discerning enough to go beyond just the mere words of the person and investigate what is being said, investigate it in the light of the purposes of God, and then you will discover who is talking. Because I, I, I found out that well-meaning people, well-intentioned, you get it? Can be misdirected. I've seen people, I mean, I've, I've interacted with them, and they, they can be whatever, 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 and yet in, in a desperate situation, in something that they need to speak faith to people, to encourage people, and to, to, to raise the faith of people, what they speak is so negative, it demoralizes other people, and not only just demoralizes them, it, 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 it kicks people in, in their faithlessness. It feeds their faithlessness. It feeds their fear. It feeds their paranoia. It feeds it. And sometimes they, they are saying it with similar voices or they are saying it with all the necessities, but it's the enemy speaking. Sometimes it's the enemy speaking. And, and they don't even know that sometimes what they are saying frustrates the purposes of God. It frustrates God's purposes. The enemy is speaking. Hmm. So sometimes when there are issues, you need to sit back a little bit and ask, who's talking? And then ask, look who's talking. Because sometimes people may be just voice boxes for enemy purposes and not trumpets for God's purposes. Look who's talking. See you the next time.